In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to put together your percussion bell kit and to play your first note on your instrument, how to find that note on the keyboard, and then also how to put it away. So let's get started. I have a pearl bell kit right now, so you might have one like this or yours might be a little bit different, but they're all basically the same. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how to put that together. I'm going to lay it on the floor I'm going to open it up. Notice I'm down on the floor. I'm kneeling down on the floor. So when I start this, I'm on the floor doing it. When I open it up, the name of the instrument is facing the ceiling so that I know I've opened it correctly. I'm gonna start with the hardware. So I'm gonna pull out these two big metal pieces. This is my stand. So I need this first because this is the most important part that holds the instrument. Okay, so when I start with this guy, I'm going to loosen this little screw and I'm going to open up these legs. Some, sometimes this can be a little tricky, but you just kind of pop those legs open and spread them out just a little bit. See that? I want to get it to where I think it's going to be right to make a nice stand. I tighten that bolt back up and I put it down. This piece goes right down in the center of that. Okay. Now, it's down, but I need to measure it to my body. So I'm gonna show you kind of how to do that. I'm going to pull this up until it gets to about my belly button. Now, it's at about my belly button, that's where I want it, maybe just a little bit below, right about my waist level, that's where I want my bell kit to be. So I'm gonna take my, there's another little bolt right here. I loosen this so that I can pull these arms up might have to do a few at a time so that it kind of comes up. It's kind of tricky. I have to kind of bring them up and bring it flat. And then I'm going to take that bolt and I'm going to tighten it. All right. Now, as I've got it, I'm going to put the short arms. Now there's long arms and short arms. This side's got the short arms. This side's got the long arms. But the short arms are going to go towards my right. My long arms are going to go towards my left. Okay, so the next piece that I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to put the bells on. I'm going to take out this instrument that has all the little keys on it. Okay, we call this a bell, a, a small set of concert bells or a keyboard. Okay, so it looks a little, a little bit like a piano keyboard, doesn't it? And I'm going to put the small side towards the small arms and the, long, the large side towards the long arms. Notice that little hole on the bottom right here. I'm going to put that right in the center, right there. I'm going to feel until I've got that in there, until it feels like it's in. Now that I've got it on there, notice I might have a little wobble, so I might have to adjust those arms just a little bit. I'm going to pull them up just a little bit so it feels nice and strong and sturdy, and then I'll tighten it again. See that? Now it's not moving at all. So I've got my bells ready to go. Then I'm going to go down and I'm going to grab my mallets. Okay? And I need two of them. One for my right hand and one for my left hand. My mallets are going to be held so that my thumbs are touching the mallets like this. And my other fingers are wrapped around. These fingers are going to help move those mallets. But I'm going to make them so that they come down like this. Now notice my arms created a teepee with the mallets. Teepee, bring them down to play. So the back of my hands are up towards the ceiling, the palms of my hands are facing the floor. Not this way, not thumbs up, back of the hands up, okay? Thumbs should be sitting on, we call this the shaft or the stick and then we're ready to play. Then when we know what note we're gonna start with, we're going to create some sound with our bell kit. So how do we figure out the sound on our bell kit or which notes are which? I'm gonna put my mallets down for a second and pull my keyboard off so you can kind of see. First of all, on this keyboard, 
they have the little names written on the bottoms of them. Can you see that? Yours might have these or they might not. We can put them on if we need to, but it's nice to have kind of a reference of what notes are what on side the keyboard. See those little note names? All the way up. Then I also look at my instrument thinking that I relate it to a piano. These would be the white keys of the piano. These would be like the black keys of the piano. And everybody's probably seen a piano and kind of know what I'm talking about. But as you look at the keyboard itself, there's a set of three black keys, a set of two, a set of three, a set of two, a set of three, what would come next? A set of two. Up and down the entire length of the keyboard or the piano. So we're gonna relate that to the piano. So I'm gonna put this down for a second. We're gonna walk over to the piano and take a look. All right, here's the piano. You can see we have a set of three, even though this one's chopped off, we only have one of that set of three. Then we have a set of two, a set of three, a set of two, a set of three, set of two, set of three, set of two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, okay? So we want to make reference to the piano onto our keyboard. And we're gonna start with looking at finding where middle C is. And I want you to know this is the middle or the very center of the piano is where this little symbol is on the back of the piano. Middle C is right to the very left of the center of those two, or right to the left of those two centered black keys. That's middle C. We also call this C4 kind of like the explosive, right? C4, D4, E4, F4, G4, A5. Because we had A4 clear down here. A4, B4, well there's that C4 again. So there's A4, but if I jump up to that same spot, eight notes higher, we have A5. If I jumped up eight notes higher and on that same spot between those three black keys, that would be A6, A7, A8. So notice we have different places on the keyboard. And when we start on our keyboard on our, on our bell kit, we're gonna start by referencing everything to C4, just so that we know where it's at. And C4 will be the lowest C we can find on our keyboard on our bells. However, on a piano, we have a C3, a C2, and a C1. So C4, center of the keyboard. Okay, let's go back to our bells. Now, on our bells, I said it was the lowest C that we find. Now, there's our C, and it's the lowest one. We don't have any lower than that. The bigger the key, the lower the sound. The smaller the key, the higher the sound. But we do have three C's on this keyboard. We have C4, C5, and C6, clear up here. So we're gonna reference everything from C4. Now the note that we're gonna learn today is clear up here. Is that a C? Nope, what does it say? It's a D, and it's not D4 because that would be right next to C4. So what D is it? If you guessed D5, you were correct. D5. Let's see where that's at on the staff. There's the staff. It's the fourth line of the staff. One, two, three, four. Its name is D, and we play it right here on the keyboard. Right between the set of two black keys. It's the highest D on our keyboard. Can't get any higher than that, D5. All right, now let's flip you back around and we'll see how we're gonna play that. Get your mallets and remember that teepee, get that good hand position on those mallets and hover over that D5. I'm gonna use right, left, right, left. Try that with me, two, ready, go. Try it again, two, ready, go. Do it again, two, ready, D5. Take your hands off, hover back, try
Try to find that good position. Ready? Go. Rest. Two, three, do it again. Rest. Two, three, four. Let's jump down and see if we can find D4. Oh, yeah, that's eight notes lower. So it's going to be down here, isn't it? D4. Try it with me. Ready? Go. Right, left, right, left. One, two, try it again. Here you go. Use both hands, right, left, right, left. Back to D5. See if you can find your spot. Ready? Two, D5, go. Rest, two, three, do it again. Rest, two, three, last time. So now we know where D5 is, we know where D4 is because in reference to C4, and we know how to find the notes on our keyboard. What's our lowest C? If you guess C4, you were right. What note were we learning today on the keyboard? D5, that's correct. Here it is on the staff. Fourth line, its name is D, and it's right there. All right, right between the two black keys, right in the middle. Good luck, practice this more if you need to, and um, don't forget to practice a lot so that you can get good at moving around. And maybe just practice saying the notes where you're at. Looking at it, practicing with it, hitting it four times in a row. Now, we need to show you how to put on the drum pad because that's the other portion of our class. So let's put the bells away. Back in the case where they go. They only fit one direction. get out the drum pad. Drum pad looks like this. All right. Now notice on the back of the drum pad, there's a little hole with little threads inside. It sits right on top of this as well. See if you can find the little spot. And then once you get it in there, oops, I didn't get it quite in there. Feel around, you got it. Then it just like tighten it on. Just screws right down. See that? Till it's nice and firm, Ooh, it's firm. Grab your drumsticks. And you're ready to go. Once you get your drumsticks, let's create that same formation we did with the mallets. Thumbs on the side, hands, fingers, other fingers wrapped around to give it firm stability. But remember, we're gonna use the wrist for our action, okay? Back of the hands up towards the ceiling, palms of the hands towards the floor. We create that teepee in the air with our sticks, bring it down, and then we're going to hit. Right, left, right, left. Did you notice how my sticks bounced up? We call this a rebound. We don't want to press it in and leave it there. That's not right. We want to let it bounce. We call that a rebound. Try it with me. Ready? Go. Right, left, right. Rest, two, three, try it again. Right, left, right, left. Is your teepee great? Don't let it come like this. Ready, go. Right, left, right, left. One, two, three, four, rest. Two, three, four, rest. Two, three, sorry, meant play. Play, two, three, four, rest. Two, three, four, check your hands. Two, three, four, and Rest, two, three, four, right, left, right, left. Take them down, put them back up, see if you've got the good position. TP and down. Ready? Got good grip here. Thumbs are on. Yes. Ready? Two. If they're too loose, I can t knock my stick out of my hand. I don't want to be able to do that. So notice how I've got good pressure here. My sticks are firm in my hand. Ready? Go. Right, left, right, left, rest, two, three, four, rest, two, three, four, right, left, right, left. 
and we'll learn some more about drum pad skills soon. All right, now that we're done practicing, we're gonna put our instrument away. So we start with the drum pad, loosen it, kind of like a steering wheel, turning it to the left, righty tighty, lefty loosey, loosen it. And when it's all the way off, it'll pop right out, put it back in your case. Make sure your mallets and your sticks are back in your case. Now I'm going to loosen that bolt right there so that my little arms can fall. I'm going to loosen this bolt so I can take it apart, pull it out. I'm going to loosen this bolt so I can put those legs up. And then I'm ready to put it away inside my case. Close it up and you're on your way out of class. Good luck if you need to practice this video some more to get good at putting it together or taking it apart or practicing your D5 today, that would be awesome. Be ready for it for next class.